Hey there, welcome to this test or study guide on chemical reactions. There's only a few questions here because this one was pretty short. Um, in this unit, we didn't do anything on acid-base reactions, organic reactions, or nuclear reactions. This is just your standard five types of chemical reactions. And that is what our first question is. So looking at the chemical reaction, you should be able to identify what type of chemical reaction each of these are. And here are your answers. First up, we have a single replacement. And I would know this is a single replacement because I have a single element coming in to a compound, kind of knocking out one of those compounds and taking its place. The single element can be a metal or a non-metal, but I usually see it as a metal. That's what you can expect to be more common, although the converse is also true. Secondly, we have a double replacement, which remember is a swapping of partners. So in this case, we have um, not quite a binary compound, but it's ionic. We have two ions here, silver and nitrate, and those two are going to swap places with the sodium and the chloride. So what happens, we have the positive silver is going to pair up with the negative chloride, where the positive sodium will now go pair up with the negative nitrate. It's important to remember the order when we do this. The positive and negative ions are always going to pair up with each other. You will never have two positives and then two negatives pair up because they repel. Okay, third, we have a synthesis where we have two smaller pieces coming together to make something bigger. And in this case, you have copper and oxygen making a copper two oxide. Um, important to remember that oxygen is a diatomic element. Then we have a decomposition. We have aluminum oxide breaking into its elements, aluminum and oxygen. Again, diatomic, don't forget that. And then we have a combustion reaction at the very end. We have some type of carbon fuel burning in the presence of oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. Now, if any of these were tough, I suggest that you go back on my channel to check out the 6.1 chemical reactions video. In that, I'll go more in depth and you'll be able to see more of these in action. Next up is balancing chemical equations. Here you have five chemical equations that need balancing. So take a minute to pause the video and get those done. Okay, you should have come up with these coefficients. Remember, we can only change the coefficients when we are balancing chemical equations. Those are those big purple numbers out front. These tiny little black numbers sitting on the bottom, those are called subscripts. And if you change those, you actually change the chemical formula. So you're not allowed to touch those when you're balancing chemical equations. When you change the coefficients, you're really just changing the amount of substance that's being involved in this reaction. Um, so just quickly taking a look here, um, because the oxygen is diatomic, I have two on my reactant side, but I only started with one on the product side. So I could not put a little two down here because that would indicate that calcium had a plus four charge, which never happens. Um, so instead, we decided to double the amount of calcium oxide made in order to retain the oxygens on both sides. Um, the idea is not just to have the same number of atoms on both sides of your chemical reaction, but also to maintain their identity. And we can see this over and over and over again in really any chemical reaction that we do. Uh, the amount of matter is going to stay the same in your standard chemical reactions. So if let's say we had um, collectively between the calcium and the oxygen, if we had 100 grams of ingredients go into this chemical reaction or rather reactants go in, we should get 100 grams back as a product. Now, sometimes this skews a little bit because we have um, gases that escape. That happens from time to time, but you could literally do this just with like vinegar and baking soda. If you have a mass of vinegar and a mass of baking soda, and then you measure them, give yourself a total, um, take that baking soda and you put it in a balloon and then put the vinegar in a, uh, an Erlenmeyer flask or even like a plastic water bottle. And you flip the balloon to get the baking soda to drip in, but very quickly, you know, it makes a gas, it foams up. So that gas is going to get captured in the balloon. Um, you can 
do this yourself. You may have a tiny little bit of gas missing because of course some of it's gonna leach through the balloon, but you should get super, super close. Um, the same is true if you have a glow stick, you measure it before, you crack it, that's a chemical reaction happening inside the glow stick. And then if you measure it later, you should have the same amount of chemicals or the same mass on both ends of your reaction, the before and the after. And that's why we have to balance equations. So the only thing that's happening here when we change coefficients is changing the amounts. That is all. Um, I have a video on my process for balancing chemical reactions or equations. And I think that process is really easy to follow. Um, so you should definitely check that out if these were a little tough. Okay, so I'll give it to you. This one was really tough. And even I uh, was very frustrated by it. So what I always do when I balance my chemical equations is I put two vertical lines here and that is going to help me separate the before and after and it helps me just to count. So after that, I list all of my elements on my reactant side. I had 6, 14, and 2. Over here, I had 1, 2, and 3. And that'll pretty much always happen on a combustion reaction. So next step is to try to figure this out. And typically I like to save the oxygens for the end on a combustion because I have my oxygens in the carbon dioxide and in the water. So you have to add those two numbers together. So I like to do them at the end. Um, so I started by putting a six here because that's kind of what's logical. That gave me six oxygens and then, I'm sorry, six carbons. And then at this point I have these 12 plus the one over here that gave me actually 13, which is a terrible number when it comes to balancing chemical equations, but it's okay for now. I am going to work on those hydrogens. I already have two here. So if I put a seven right there, seven times two would give me the 14. And now instead of having 13, I have 12 plus seven, that's 19 oxygens, which also is a terrible number for balancing chemical equations. And 19 is not divisible by two. No matter what number I put here, I have to multiply it by two and I'm never gonna be able to get 19 right there, which means that my six and my seven are no good. But here's a trick. This um, will never come out to 19, but if you take any number and double it, you get an even number, right? If you count by twos, two, four, six, eight, ten, they're all even numbers. So if I want this product to come out to 19, um, there's no way to do it. But if I go instead and I double all of my coefficients, this X coefficient that I have right here times two, no matter what it is, is going to come out to an even number. I now am going to go in and double all of my coefficients. So out in front of this uh, hexane, that's what this is called, it's a carbon chain, um, there's an invisible coefficient of one. And if I were to double that coefficient, I would get two. This I'm gonna save for last. Um, this 12, uh, I'm sorry, this six should become a 12. And this seven should become a 14. So I'm going to go through and count everything that I have right now. Um, over here, I would have 12 carbons. And 2 times 14 is 28 hydrogens. I still have those two oxygens because I haven't done anything with that X coefficient yet. This carbon, I have 12 of them. The hydrogen is 14 times 2. That is 28. So that is pairing up very well so far. And then between my oxygens, they're in two places, remember. This 12 times the two on the carbon dioxide gives me a total of 24 on the carbon dioxide, plus I have 14 in the water, which is going to give me 38 in total. And 38 divided by two is what this X coefficient needs to be which believe it or not is 19. 19 times two would give me the 38. And there you have it. Now, this one was crazy tough. If your teacher gives you this, um, I would call this the hundred breaker on the test. This is going to really show who knows how to balance chemical equations very well. 
if you could do this, I think you can do just about anything when it comes to balancing chemical equations. And if you want more practice with it, try some carbon molecule like this one, where um, you have an even number of carbons, and then your hydrogen is going to be the double the carbon plus two. So you could try this with C4 H, double it, add two, that's 10. You can do it with C8 H, double it, add two, 18. If you can do either of those, I think you're golden. Last up is turning these word equations into chemical equations. You should make sure to balance these as well. For the sake of space, I've split these. So first off, we had ammonia is decomposed into its elements. Ammonia is NH3, and that's its common name. Its true name is nitrogen trihydride. Um, ammonia, your teacher may expect you to know that formula. Anyways, um, it decomposes into its elements, which is nitrogen and hydrogen. And it's important to remember that both of those are diatomic elements, so they need that little two subscript. Next up, you have sodium chloride and silver nitrate react to form silver chloride. So in this case, we had the sodium chloride, NaCl, and silver nitrite, I'm sorry, nitrate, silver nitrate, AgNO3, and they are going to react to form silver chloride. If you quickly take a look at this, we have the silver and the chloride reacting, which is a swap of partners, meaning that my sodium and my nitrate would also pair up, giving me sodium nitrate. All of these ions have a charge of either plus one or minus one, so there's no need for coefficients here. It's already balanced. Next up, we have aluminum reacts with oxygen in a synthesis reaction, which tells us that those two ingredients are going to be squished together to make something bigger. Aluminum, nothing special about it. It's just the metal, but oxygen is diatomic. These are uh, going to make an ionic bond, so we crisscross them to figure out what their formula is, Al2O3, and that is called aluminum oxide. And when we go to balance it, we have four aluminums on each side. Um, remember, this two had to be here on the oxygen, which gives us six over here and six in the products. Then lastly, we have lithium reacts with potassium chloride, and the fact that this lithium is just lithium should give a hint that this is going to be a single replacement reaction. So we have lithium who comes in, kicks out the potassium, and makes lithium chloride with potassium chilling on the outside. And that's it. If you struggled with any of these or found them difficult, I really recommend you check out the chemical reactions playlist and rewatch some of these that kind of go a little bit more in depth. Um, Aside from that, please leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video. I'd be happy to have them answered for you. Subscribe so you don't miss our next unit, which is stoichiometry. I bet you will love it. And uh, subscribe so you don't miss it. I'll see you there.